Blog Talk Radio. <clears throat> Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Last First Date Radio, the place to be for creating healthy, lasting relationships, especially after 40. Today, uh, this is episode number 347, and I'm going to be speaking with speaker, author, and podcast host, Simone Molasses. Uh, I think I screwed that up. Molasses. <laughs> I'm going to get the real drill when we start the show on how to consciously uncouple, how to break up with grace and dignity. And for those of you who are new to Last First Date Radio, I want to share a little bit about my mission. I feel like I was reborn after 50. I got divorced after a 23-year marriage. I got certified as a life coach after spending most of my life as a working artist. And I began a new career as a dating coach for women over 40. And over the last 10 years that I've been doing this work, I realized that what I love most is the deeper work of helping women really own their value, define it, communicate it, to love themselves enough to play bigger and speak up more powerfully and to stand up for the things that matter. Short, I call this the Woman of Value Movement, and I have just launched a new website called thewomanofvalue.com if you want to check it out. I am helping women at work. I am helping women all over the planet to really just own their worth and and speak it out for the world to hear. So every week I bring you a tip on how to become that woman of value, and this week's tip is to embrace your beauty. This is particularly relevant to me today because in my Facebook group, which is Your Last First Date, and you're all invited to join us there, there was a whole discussion today about body love and women rejecting their bodies because of of things that men have said to them, that they're heavier than men usually like or a man might make fun of a certain body part of a woman and then the woman takes it to heart and feels shame about her body and I believe that we all are beautiful and that we have to stop letting other people determine what beauty is um, it really is so such an issue especially here in America um, and I'm sure in, in most countries we all have different ideas about beauty, but you, to embrace your own beauty, makes you glow from the inside out. And so I really encourage you to take whatever part of your body that you're rejecting, if you are, to just give it some love today and um, just love yourself more. All right. So, yes, I just mentioned my Facebook group, Your Last First Date. It is a group for women who are looking for some support and guidance to to find and um to find love after 40 and to if you are in a relationship to really continue to have the most heart-centered, wholehearted relationship. Um this is a place for positive growth. We are very, very strict about guidelines so that the conversation doesn't go off the rails. Kindness is one of our top values in the group. So if you're looking for a group that supports all of that, come to your last first date. All right, so uh, my guest today, Simone Molasses. And tell me, am I saying that right? <laughs> it's Melissa's, but that's fine. Everybody Melissa's. gets it wrong. <laughs> it's not the easiest name in the world, so it's fine. I wrote it out phonetically. And yeah. like, <laughs> Melissa's. Simone yes, Militant. Melissa's. Okay. Melissa's. Simone she, Melissa's. Melissa's. Yes. Got it. Yes. <laughs> She is an international speaker. She's the author of Relationship, Do You Want One? The Joy of Business and Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. She's an acclaimed business and life mentor, and she travels the world facilitating seminars with access consciousness. She is a lady who knows how to be a woman. Simone revels in the joys of future opportunity and knows that the prospect of possibility resides in every choice you make. Oh, I love that. You can find her every week on her podcast, The Art and Industry of Pod of Business. The Art and Industry of Business. 
So in this book, we're going to uh, talk about what happens when a couple releases a book on relationships and then decides to break up and how to unconsciously <laughs> uncouple. <laughs> so I'm really messing up all the words today. So you can break up with dignity. Welcome to the show, Simone. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So the book is called Relationship. Are you sure you want one? Why did you write this book and why did you choose this title? Yeah, so it has been uh, a pretty uh, amazing epic journey that we've had. And we, uh, Brennan Brennan Watt, who is the co-author of the book with myself, uh, we both travel around the world doing seminars, etc. And I've worked with Access Consciousness for, you know, over 17 years and one of, the, one of the topics that seems to trip so many people up is relationships. It's like they're always, you know, judging themselves of what they don't have or what they do have or what they haven't done correct, et cetera. Like it's a, it's a constant state of judgment. And to me, relationship shouldn't be a constant state of judgment. It should be something where you are actually having fun, you know, with somebody. So I actually created a fantastic relationship with Brendan for eight years. And a lot of people used to ask us, you know, what are you doing? What tools are you, are you using? And we literally did use the tools of access consciousness and it worked um, for eight years. And the funny thing is we, we wrote this book. We did some classes on it. We wrote this book and, I, and well, you've, you've released um, a book. It's like it, it takes a while to get out there. So by the time we got it out, we actually uh, broke up our relationship. Uh, I think it's about five, six months ago now. So, you know, we released it and it was, it's been very funny because the media is like, really, you, you wrote a book and now you've, you've broken up. But it, it, to us, it's like, I don't know, it, it even gives more credence to the book and the question on the book, relationship, are you sure you want one? And it's funny, I'm in Rome, Italy at the moment and mm. uh, I arrived to you last night and Brennan arrived here yesterday too because we have some access classes here. And today we just went out and had lunch today, had a you know, great bottle of wine and, and caught up. And we both cried at one point at lunch because we were so grateful for each other and everything that we've had. And we still are able to talk about a lot of different things. And we both know that we did create a great relationship. And yet, I don't know, it gets to that point, Sandy, where we, it, it's like our lives were changing so much and it was like, well, maybe it's time to actually create something different. And I was having this conversation with someone recently who, you know, so many people look at relationships and say, oh, they've got a great relationship. It's their 32nd anniversary, their 50th anniversary. That doesn't create a great relationship. Someone can have a great one for two years. And I think I, I would like everyone to get to is knowing that moment when maybe it's time to look at it and say, okay, have we done what we were meant to do together and is there more available for you and is there more available for me? And know when it's time to actually create, you know, a different reality for yourself and for the other person. So so that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's interesting that you had a great relationship and then you both realized that it was time to move on. And often it's not true that both parties know that. You know, what would have happened if one of you knew and the other one felt that it was still time to stay? Where do you think you would well, be today with, with your relationship with him? Okay, so I mean, Brendan was the one who actually chose to break up the relationship. And I've got mm-hmm. to say, I was, immediately I was sort of in shock going, oh, I thought we had this great relationship, right? And then... I'm, I'm very proud of myself because what I actually started to look at and, you know, with the classes I facilitate around the world, et cetera, with access consciousness is about being, you know, more present in your choices and having a look at what it is you're choosing. And when I started to look at it, I went, wow, he's actually the courageous one and he's right. For the past, I don't know, like six, eight months or something like that, it wasn't as great as what it could have been. It sort of, and not that it was bad, but it sort of, slipped into this place of I'm going to say maintenance and to me like what I like to nickname a great relationship is creationship because if you're going to be in a relationship with someone you should be creating at least 20 times more together than what you would alone and we did we have created a lot together and I'm going to say in the last six eight months we started to do maintenance on it rather than creating and to me I'm 
so creative. I'm such a creative person that if I looked at it, it I, I would have just been, you know, accepting something that was rather than actually looking at what else was available for me in this amazing, you know, amazing planet of ours, like what else is available and not like I've got to go and find another relationship. So I, I was a little bit shocked to begin with. And yet I, I also really care about him and I honor him so much that I also knew that whatever he needed to do to have more of him, I would always support that. And we always said that to each other as well. And I guess we're a pretty different people like that. Like we do have that. It's like I've always desired for pretty much everyone I know. If, if something's going to create something greater for you, please choose that. Because what mm. are you choosing something less for for somebody else, you know? Yeah, it certainly sounds really grown up and honoring <laughs> and dignified. <laughs> like most yeah. people don't live from that place, which is why access consciousness has consciousness in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it is an ideal, I think, to live in that place of consciousness. And and um, so how? Yeah. How do? How do? I want to take a step back to the relationship sure. you did create for eight years, um, and that you lived in that model of access consciousness or the creation ship. So tell us a little bit about what that looked like. Um, well, I think it was totally always honoring of each other right from the beginning of what the other person desired to do. Like, you know, if I look at when we first, uh, you know, started seeing each other and I mean, the way Brandon moved into my house was we came back from a trip. Uh, we were in New Zealand, came back and he looked at me and he said, um, I don't have anywhere to hang my clothes. <laughs> I went, Are you moving in? And he went, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and he just moved in. Like, it wasn't this big discussion. It was just like, okay, that's the next obvious choice, you know. And I was traveling the world a lot, and I was earning a lot more money, which was, you know, unusual. Like, you know, that's not what this reality says is supposed to happen. The man is supposed to earn more money. The man is supposed to be the breadwinner. And I was earning a lot more money. He was hating what he was doing. Uh, he was a, a tradesman. Like, he was a tiler. A very good one, but he hated it. And I said to him, look, why don't you take some time off? Why don't you stop doing that? Because you hate it. Every time you come home from work, you're, you know, you're depressed. What if you actually chose something different? What if you gave yourself some space? And I said, I'm fine. You know, you're living here. It's good. I've, I've, I've got us. Like, so I actually, he, had, he took 18 months off. <laughs> and I supported wow. You know, him and his um, his son, like I have a stepson from, from being with him. But he was so such a contribution around the house. Like, he, we started doing renovations on the house. He would fabulous cook. Like, you know, I'd, I'd be at home sitting at the kitchen bench with a glass of wine, my computer open, talking to people because I work all over the world, and he'd be cooking this fabulous meal. So it was such an, a contribution all the time, and it didn't look normal. Like, if I was... Um, he took 18 months off, just sort of started discovering what it is that he would like to choose to do. And now he's actually a facilitator of access as well and, and travels around the world and, and, and doing that and, and found out that he had way more talents and capacities in different areas. But the point is, I think that the whole time we were so honoring of each other of like, what is it, what is it that you would like to choose? And I think if you're going to create a great relationship, you've got to let the other person do whatever it is that they want to do. Like, not try and control them, not try and own mm. them. I see so many people in a relationship think, oh, now I own someone. You don't own someone because you're in a relationship. It, it, this person should be someone that you have gratitude for, someone that you're, you know, you're trusting, that you're honoring them, that you have a, a, a level of allowance for them um, just as much as you have for yourself. And it's this constant state of question, not answer. Like, I see relationships. Uh, becomes an answer and a conclusion when people go, well, I have one now, so, you know, it can tick that box. And it's like, no, it mm. shouldn't be ticking a box. It should be something that's, that's you're this living, this adventure. And, and I don't mean like, you know, every weekend or every night you've got to go do something super exciting. It's like, it's this adventure of discovering what you could create together. And also creating doesn't have to be you're doing everything together. Like the fact that I travel all over the world and I'd be like, okay, honey, by leaving for four weeks, you know, and he would look after everything in the house, you know, from our herb garden, you know, et cetera. And he would look after that and I'd be away traveling and we'd talk to each other, but it wasn't this, 
necessity to have each other close to each other all the time. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like very interdependent. You had your own lives, you supported each other's growth and you wanted each other to, to do the best they could do. Both you could do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and then so when Brennan felt that he had more to do outside of this relationship, is that is that kind of where where it went then? That he needed to grow outside of the relationship yeah like i mean we that's actually one of the topics that we spoke about today at lunch and uh because i i've never i've never been one of those people who needed a relationship i've had you know Mm. a few different relationships but i literally did it for the fun of it not because it was it was a need um and i do see people who need it and brendan we were talking today that i mean he was in a relationship with someone for 12 years i think when he was like 17 and that's where his mm. son came from. And then he split up with her and then was with me within six months. So, and he said, you know, I realized that I definitely function from I need a relationship to create myself, which is not true. And uh, like we were talking today saying, you know, we both uh, are grateful for the eight years that we had together. And he said, I knew I needed to do something different to find out more about myself. So, mm-hmm. And I don't know if that sounds like a, a cheesy way to break up a relationship or not, yet I know it's true. I know that what he was choosing, I know him. It's like he's going to choose to be everything that he can be uh, today like and choose mm-hmm. even more tomorrow. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love and adore about him. And I know that's one of the things that he loves and adores about me, that we will continuously not choose less than. We will always choose something greater. Mm, I love that. I, you know, and I, I have to say that when I ended my marriage, that was my primary reason. I felt I could not explore who I was or be who I was if I stayed in that marriage. And the first feeling I had when I stepped into my new home was freedom, free to be me. <laughs> and yeah. it, it was like this amazing feeling. Because there, yeah. there was like this trapped feeling I had many times that, that I was stuck here, that there was, there was this desire for him to create me in the way that he needed me to be. You know, everything that you're talking about. And it's, I, I am a person who values creativity tremendously and growth and having deep conversation and, and really exploring things and, and, and having somebody attend to a conversation um, in a way that they're really paying attention and listening and valuing. Um, And I couldn't get that in this marriage. And so I didn't leave for somebody else. I left to save myself. And I think that's, that's a good reason to leave. (laughs) I do Um, too. I do too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how does somebody consciously uncouple, how do they create what you did with Brennan um, that you can sit down and have wine and laugh and cry together. How how can people do that? Um, okay, so I mean, I can I, and, and I can give you you know some top tips here and tools. And I'm going to say it takes a lot of courage. Uh, mm-hmm. at, at one stage, we like I mean because we've we've got you know houses together. It's like you know real estate investments, like all of that, and. What we did do with each other was we went, okay, we had a mutual friend of ours, Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access, said to us, I want you to write down three things that you desire from each other. And it was interesting because he said three things, I, I went to, oh, it's going to be who gets the house, who gets the dog, who gets the, you know, <laughs> things like that. Mm-hmm. And then when I started to look at it and take a moment and I wrote down three things and Brennan did too, and then we met together and we went, okay, what's the three things? Interesting enough, the first thing on both of our lists was friendship. We would like to keep our friendship. We'd like to, if 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 we need to work on our friendship, then let's make that, uh, you know, a choice that we both make. And then the second thing was to do with um, our son, because he's my stepson. I've I've had him since he was five. He's 13 now, almost 14. So, and Brendan asked that I still be in his life, et cetera, and what that looks like. So what I noticed was it wasn't about things. It was about the the constant creation of a different possibility. 
And I think if you can look at that and go, okay, what is it that you actually desire from this person? I mean, I saw this Instagram post that Drew Barrymore did, and I thought it was brilliant. She's got this photo of her and her ex-husband saying, everyone said I had the fairy tale now. And she said, I can see how you saw that. And yet, you know, now we're split up and we've got these two, you know, amazing kids. And I'm grateful for that. And I also desire to remember the sweet and not the bitter. And it's one of the things I see people split up in a relationship. They start going, hey, you know what? He did this and he did that. Or she, she was never this. Or, and it's like, you know, why would you choose to dishonor someone that you're in a relationship with? What if it was about still being grateful for everything that they were? I mean, I had some great times with Brendan. So, and I choose to have even greater times with him as a friend, you know. So honoring that. So I think you've got to have a look at what it is you truly desire. And also, um, at one point, we literally were willing to go to create World War Three. We actually had a bottle of wine and went out onto our brand at our house and we went, okay, let's talk about it. What are, you, what are you angry about? What are you angry about? And we asked each other questions and we're both ready to go there, to never speak to each other again, to have this World War Three. And do you know what, Sandy? It was one of the best conversations we've ever had because we were willing to be so forthright with each other and just sort of go, well, you know what, Blah, this, you know. And so we we spoke about everything that was up for each other and then and also what we want to create. And I think that's the thing that really um, is moved us forward, though, is that we are both honouring of each other of what the other person desires to create in their life and in the world. So it's like, okay, if that's going to create something greater, then let's do that. Let's do this. So, But I think you need to be really uh, honest with yourself of what it is that you'd like to create with the person. And it's funny because Brendan and I work together too, so it wasn't as though we could break up. You know, we, like I said, we have we have real estate. We, have, we own part of a castle in Italy and a property in Costa Rica. Like there's things all over the place. So mm. we could make that messy, or we could actually still create together because we have an, a, an amazing ability to create together. And we spoke about that today as well. It's like, you know, do we want to keep creating different things together? Because we. You know, when people get together, there's certain people who get together and their creative capacity together is quite phenomenal. Like, we have Mm -hmm. that. So do we want to keep doing that or do we actually want to split things up or what is that? And to me, if I look at it and say, okay, so where would my life be like in five years, ten years, if we split everything up now or if we kept these things and kept the growth um, occurring, you know, what would that be like? So it's sort of this constant state of question and I think you need to remain in question of what works for you and what works for them not going into the conclusion of what you've decided something should be and it's like if you get angry or frustrated ask yourself what are you angry about here like what are you frustrated like this is the person you actually chose to be in a relationship with in the first place so you know do you really hate them or is there something else going on you know I think Mm. people get a little bit uh caught up in their emotions and rather than looking at, okay, so what's actually really going on right now? What is it that I would really like to choose? And what yeah, do you feel about this person? Mm-hmm. And knowing you're at choice is a big one too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you do have choice. Please get that, everyone listening out there. You have choice. <laughs> you can choose anything. And I love your introduction to the show as well that you are, you know, talking about, you know, relationships, et cetera, for women over, over 40, over 50, because I see mm-hmm. so many people who go, oh, no, now I don't, you don't have choice anymore. I'm too old. It's not true. Mm. You have choice every nope. single day. And it's like, you know, what else is available that you've not yet asked for? What possibilities are available you've not yet asked for? Yeah. So no, I, I'm so with you. I, I, you know, I just, I'm always creating, obviously I'm 62 and I just created a new business and it's like, I can't wait I love it. for what's next. Right. It's, it's yeah. like we, we have these choices. And I remember my, my father used to say, um, Oh, I'm not like you, you know, you have these abilities. I don't. And I'm like, no, that's not true. I just work hard at it and don't give up. Um, But this whole idea of creation really excites me because it's one of the reasons I married my husband. He is a comedian and um, a puppeteer, and 
I was an artist. We worked together, and that was where we really shined. It was co-creating a TV show for children and um, creating many pilot projects and, and writing comedy together. I mean, that was that was fun and exciting, but it wasn't the end of my dream. It was more of me yeah. being a supporting role in his dream. So that was really the catalyst for me just stepping out on my own and figuring out what that was. So let's, let's but I love that about... like you you have but you have that with your your ex husband and it was great. Doesn't mean mm-hmm. it has to go on forever. You know, it's like eating a great meal, and it's like you 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 eat a great meal. You don't need to eat it every day, and it's like yeah. that was great. Now what else is available? Like there's so mm-hmm. much else out there on this amazing planet. That's what I get. <laughs> yeah, it's true, and also I think if we look at our friendships, it's the same thing. I think a lot of Friendships run their course, and especially as we grow. So if you are a person who is growing and always going to that next edge of who you are and your old friend who you've known for 30 years is still kind of stuck in the same belief system, your friendship is going to grow apart, and that's okay. You know, the season for that friendship is over. You still may have love in your heart for that person, but that person is not going to be a constant in your life. And I, I think people really struggle with that. Mm, I totally agree. Yep. And I find that, uh, I mean, relationship is also with friends. It's not just necessarily the person you're choosing to copulate with. It's like relationships mm-hmm. with everyone. And yes. what I noticed is as I grew so fast and changed so much and chose for myself I noticed that a lot of people that I knew when I was younger or my family were like, they would come out with these things like, oh, Simone doesn't do that or Simone wouldn't choose that or Simone. And I was like, wow, people are like boxing me in to what <laughs> they've decided is this predictable choice rather than I'm like, no, actually I've changed <laughs> and I change every day. So I think if you can ask for people to show up in your life who are in allowance of you changing every day and encourage you and empower you to change every day, then we have one of the greatest adventures, you know, available. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I, I you know, I, my kids didn't all go to college and I was, people would scoff at me and how how could you not send your kids to college? And it wasn't the right path for all my children. And some mm-hmm. went to take a few courses, some, you know, were out-of-the-box thinkers, some our self-motivated musicians and artists and you know they're all following their path and so I honor the the path in them and the creativity within them and I think that if we all again put each other in a box and you have to go to college because it feels safe to me to that you went to college but that's not their path and so it's it's yeah it's very interesting I think if you are it's not following yeah. convention you have to you have to really own your path and be proud of the path that you're creating and and not yeah I mean the whole box thing is the don't, um, yeah don't give it up for okay. anyone <laughs> exactly um, I I would love for you to address the questions that somebody can ask themselves before they enter a relationship or if they're in a relationship now and they want to know if they should stay or go what are some important questions. Okay, so one of the questions that I pretty much ask nearly every day, and it wasn't like linear when I asked it, but I would literally ask, okay, so is this working for me today? Especially, you know, as I spoke about um, when I said to Brendan, you know, take 18 months. Well, I didn't say take 18 months off. I said take some time off, and it ended up <laughs> being 18 months. <laughs> yeah. I was like a couple of weeks, you know. No, but I, every day, because a lot of the times I was so creative and I'm one of those people who wake up and it's just like, you know, boom, let's go. And uh, and he would be depressed uh, quite a bit or, you know, lying on the couch and, you know, having a couple of beers and I'd be running around just like, boo, 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 like creating. And I remember <laughs> at one stage he said to me, will you stop being so happy? And I looked at him and I went, no, but I was okay with him not being happy. I was not going to change me, but I was okay with that. And he looked at me and he went, do you know how hard it is to be unhappy and depressed when you live with someone who's happy? (laughs) And I just Mm. cracked up laughing. And then so did he. And he was like, my God, this is crazy. But every day I still ask, is this working for me today? Because people would be like, why are you with him? And I was like, it's a contribution. Somewhere it's a contribution. And I didn't have to work it out. 
I didn't have to go to the linearity of like how is it a contribution. I looked at the energy of it and was like, yes, this is a contribution. So have a, have a, ask the question, is, is this relationship working for me today? And I don't mean like, no, it's not, and then get all like fiery. It's like, you'll know. And it's not something you even have to discuss with your partner. You'll know. And then if you get this energy of like, mm, maybe it's not, then you might want to have a look at it and ask, okay, so is there something I can change here? And it's like, what can I be here and what can I change and what can I do different? Because if you don't do your relationship different, then you will get to that stage where it's about maintenance. And yeah, it's not very exciting. Most people get bored with the maintenance of something rather than the creation of something. And ask, it's like, will this person, you know, contribute to me? Um, also ask for, like what I started asking for is someone who was kind, caring and nurturing to show up in my life. And that's when Brendan did show up. And he, he is one of the most kindest, caring people I know. So did he have money that was supporting me and doing all of that? No, but I had enough money. I was fine. So he was kind, caring and nurturing and was, uh, you know, was available for me. So don't look at the... The rules of this reality, like of what a relationship is supposed to be, because there is no relationship that is the same as another one. So choose what works for you. Like don't choose what somebody is projecting at you that it should be and ask questions around that. Is this relationship going to work for me? Will it be fun? You know, will I learn something? Like will we create something greater? Like Keep in the question. Be in the question and always, you know, be willing to uh, change something, you know, choose something different and be an allowance of the other person. Hmm. I, I really love these questions because so many people are taking the outside projections as their reality. And we just had a question like this in our Facebook group about what other people were saying about this woman's relationship, and she's starting to doubt herself. And so I threw the questions back at her. And, you know, how do you feel? How, how is this working mm. for you? Because they don't know you. They are not walking in your shoes. They have no idea what your life experience is, what your relationship really is. You're the one who's living with this reality. And most people have a hard time trusting themselves. So it's it's really getting back into the depth of who we are and what we need in order to create what works for us. And I think you really, like that trusting yourself, that's really important. And it's like trust what you know, not what somebody else is mm-hmm. telling you. I mean, when I, you know, Brendan was actually 11 years younger than me. So I, you know, got the nickname of I had a toy boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but there's a lot of judgments that come with that, you know. And uh, the toy boy, he um, he had no money. In fact, I found out that he was hugely in debt after we bought our first house. We were sitting there, and he looked at me, and he went, oh, by the way, and he said, did you know that I owe the Australian government, like, you know, this amount of money? And I looked at him and went, oh, I thought that was something <laughs> you would tell someone before you buy a house together. And he looked at me, he was like, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really think about it. And I was like, okay, then we have to do with this. You know, he had a kid, which I had never really asked for children. He had a dog, which I was pretty happy about the dog because I always wanted a dog but never thought I'd <laughs> commit to it. So, but he had all of these things. I mean, like he smoked cigarettes, which to me I didn't really like, but he smoked cigarettes. So if I had this point of view of going, I will not be with a smoker, then I wouldn't have met him who was kind, caring, and nurturing, you know, ended up giving up smoking. It's not any, a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you don't uh-huh, have this uh-huh. point of view of what something has to be like, then you're actually willing to receive something greater, something beyond your judgment, something beyond your expectations, something beyond the projections of what relationships should be. Because people have this idealistic point of view. Like my mother used to say to me, I would overhear her talking to people saying, oh, she'll be happy when she finds the one. And I was like, seriously? And I was like... <laughs> I was one of the happiest people I knew, traveling around the world, having a great time. But I made no sense to anyone else. I wasn't predictable. I was, you know, irrational as far as everyone else was concerned. So they wanted to put me in a box to be happy when she finds the one. And it's like, no, you can, you can wake up happy. That's a choice. You have that choice as well. And if you're going to choose a relationship, choose a great one. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, and I and I think that this is what you just said also about the fact that he was a smoker and 
you know, that wasn't your ideal. That wasn't what you were looking for. But with all the qualities and the traits that he had, those became more important. And, you know, the debt, all those things, those those are things that we can matter. work through usually. Right. It doesn't matter Absolutely. in the end. And and in in the Facebook group, there are some wonderful relationships that women have, and they're all relationships like this. These are women who threw out their list, who fell in love with somebody they never thought they would fall in love with, somebody who made a lot less money than they thought they needed, that had different kind of education than they thought they needed, who smoked, who had, you know, all these issues, all but they it. fell yeah. madly in love. <laughs> Yep, love comes in surprise packages if you're open to it. It's really true. I love that. And I love what you said, throw out your list. That's what it should yep, be, throw, throw out the out. list. The list should not exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love this conversation, Simone. I could talk to you for hours. Um, and I would love for you to let people know how they can find out more about you. Well, uh, I've got many websites, but the first one I would go to on this is the the one for our book it's called relationship are you sure you want one.com so it's nice and easy and on there you can actually get um there's a download of me reading a couple of chapters and there's a, a course that we have on there etc so you can and of course you can buy the book and it's very um it's very vulnerable the book there's a lot of stories in there where brendan and i really sort of tell all because why not it's like we figured it was it was going to empower other people to realize that they don't have to hide stuff either so we do we go everywhere and it's it's quite humorous so relationship are you sure you want one is a good start okay i got that that will be in the show notes as well um simone you have such great energy i love it and i think i can pronounce your last name melissus did i get it <laughs> correct Wonderful. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for, for coming on my show today, for, for doing this amazing work, for inspiring people to create a life they love and to be conscious. We need more of that. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you, too, for what you're doing. I think it's a brilliant uh, topic and a brilliant uh, you know, uh, podcast and the, the Facebook group that you have. I, I, love, I love that you're empowering women to know that, it's not the end if you're, you know, <laughs> over 40, over 50, et cetera. It's wonderful. So thank you for being in the world, too. Uh, and thank you for having me on oh, here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for listening today. And if you love our show, please take a moment to rate and review us over at iTunes. It means a lot. And I hope that you go on your last first date very soon. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>